Okay, today we'll be fixing oven fried squash and a great big, this is the bottom of my pan, it says Bayou Classic, right there. Now I'm preheating this oven to 450 degrees, which actually might seem a little bit uh, on the warm side, but uh, from previous experience I know this oven uh, won't burn stuff too much at uh, 450 degrees. The previous oven that was in here uh, if I'd put it on 450 degrees, it would have just totally incinerated stuff. But this one here, 450 is not 450, I don't think. Or maybe on the other one, 450 was 600, I don't know. Take somewhere around four of these uh, great looking squash here to uh, fill that pan up. Cut them probably a little less than a quarter of an inch thick. And the cooking time is going to be variable on this. It kind of depends on how thick you slice your squash and it also makes a difference you know one oven varies from another oven and it makes a difference what uh, size pan you cook it in. Whenever I cook the squash in this pan and it's, it's done just in 16 minutes on each side. Whereas this pan here <laughs> about 22 minutes on each side. 16 minutes on each side 22 minutes on each side. Since it varies by uh, the thickness of the squash and the type of pan and your oven, uh, just take my cooking times with a grain of salt. Okay, and then I put the squash down in a uh, pan shake it up over the sink because lots of times I make a mess. Shake it up real good. See there, the, <laughs> right off the bat, the bag has a hole in the bottom of it. That's why you're over the sink. And then put it out in the plate. I'll take part of this and put it over into my other plate. Plate to be too full. And I always use olive oil on it. The really good thing about cooking it in the oven, it may not look like it here, but trust me, I'm using just a whole lot less oil than I would be if I was cooking it on the stovetop and turning it over with a spatula. What I'm going to be doing here is just putting one layer of squash on this uh, whole cooking surface of this pan here. And even though I put the squash in the bag and shook it up with the cornmeal, I like to uh, take it and put a little additional cornmeal on it just, just like so. I guess there's several different methods to doing this, but the way I do it is take, I take my larger squash and I put around the perimeter of the pan to start with, with my larger squash. It just seems like I'm able to get a better, a better packing of squash in there whenever I uh, go with the larger ones around the perimeter of the pan. And then I work my way to the inside. Okay, and there is a full pan. And now put a little bit of salt on them. And a small amount of pepper. And it's really nice to put pepper on because when you turn them over, you're, more, you're better able to tell which ones you have and haven't turned over if you uh, have a little pepper on them. And into the oven we go. I shall put my timer on 22 minutes here. Okay, now it's break time. I got my trusty oven mitts and my trusty pot holders because believe you me, this pan is hot, hot, hot. Okay, normally I just use a couple of forks to turn these things over.
as I say, it really does help uh, to have it peppered because every now and then you'll get one that didn't get very brown and it's, you wind up forgetting which ones you have turned over and which ones you haven't. Okay, now what you want to do is the ones on the outside of the pan get browner than the ones on the inside. So what you want to do is swap them. Take the ones from the outside that are that are the brown that look the brownest and swap them from one on the inside that doesn't look like it's very brown at all. And it just it just makes for a more even cooking of your squash when you swap them around like this. They shrink up when you cook them, so I like to mash them all together and create a little pocket in the center. And into that little pocket in the center, I like to put my onions. Nothing like some cooked onions. They just, it takes all the strength out of them. I don't like onions as very strong when you cook them. They just, to me, taste a whole lot better. Okay, the next step is, uh, if your pan looks a little bit dry in places, you take your spoon, put you a little bit of oil in the spoon, and the little, the little openings between the squash, you put like just the least amount you can, that you can get the roll off of your spoon. If you had an eyedropper, it would be good even. <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever cooks with an eyedropper. Probably not. But anyway, but just about the least amount that you can get to come off of the spoon put in between your squash. Try your best not to get any on top of your squash if you can help it. Because they're going to be oily enough already. But, like I say, they're going to be much less oily than if you cook them on top of the stove. You may not have to do this between every little crack, but you can tell where your pan's dry. Okay, put a little bit more salt on it. Not much. It's ready to go back in the oven. Okay, it's time to take it out and see what we got here. Delicious oven fried squash. Cook to semi-perfection. <laughs> Yummy. I usually like to put one sheet of bounty in the bottom of the uh, plate there. Actually, I think it's cooked almost to perfection. I do say so myself. Okay, and there you have it. Right, right there. The oven fried squash. And I want you to know it is just delicious. Kind of hot, but delicious. And like I say, do take my, uh, my oven temperature, count with a grain of salt because all ovens are a little different, and take my cooking times, which actually turned out to be like 23 minutes on the first side, and maybe 24, I'm not sure because I had some camera difficulties, uh, and 20 minutes on the second side. So it's going to take a little bit of experimentation to, to get the right, the right temperature and the right amount of time on each side because there's a whole lot of variables, uh, oven to oven, uh, pan to pan and how thick you cut your squash, so uh, bon appetit.